Hey guys and welcome to Nomadic Dmitry channel. Today we're gonna be talking about test automation, which is my favorite topic. The tool we're gonna be discussing today is called App Aim Inspector, guys. This tool allows you to basically inspect your Android application and then just basically detect all the elements that's on your application. This is the best way to basically run your test automation tools, test automation scripts. So basically you can just know what element it is and just perform actions with this element, like tap in some button, entering some text in the form. This is just the best way to inspect stuff because nobody wants to manually inspect all the elements and just try to guess what's located where. This tool is now shipped separately from the Appium package. Now you need to install uh, Appium server separately and then Appium inspector separately and then ADB separately, which is Android debug bridge, which we're gonna talk right now. So what you need to do basically, this video is supposed to be short. So we're gonna be just getting up to the point straight. What you need to have? So first of all, you need to have Android emulator, which is running right here. I installed as part of an Android studio guys. So basically if you go to this page developer android you're gonna be just basically reading about the emulator stuff but all you need to do is install android studio on your computer as part of android studio you're also gonna have the android debug bridge which is called adb a terminal command that allows you to connect to your emulator or your physical phone and this is the way to basically install apps debug something on your emulator or real device basically very really great method of interacting with your device or emulator and of course you need to have the appium installed appium is basically the tool to run your test automation scripts on your device or emulator right guys so basically you just need to have installed if you have a Mac just go here and install it as part of the homebrew package homebrew is also like a package management tool for your Mac and then of course we need to have app inspector and then of course we need to have some application that you would like to debug or just practice on so I have this application which is called my expenses this is the link basically to F Droid website you can download APK and basically play with it you can have any other application I just selected this one because I think it should be a good one but I have never actually Actually run it so let's actually go ahead and see how it works this is all what we need to have emulator running right here so let's actually check that we can connect this emulator to do that we need to type adb devices like this so you see it's called emulator 554 it means it's running then what we need to have is of course the appium inspector installed which is right here i have it running right here emulator running i have the appium inspector running and of course we need to also have the appium server running as well so after you install the package to run your appium server you just need to tap appium Apium and that's basically it. It says the server uh, URL right here, which is basically the default one, localhost and 4723. Here it is. Then we need to go to Appium Inspector and specify parameters that we would like to use to connect to our Appium server and run the APK that we want, right? There are basically just three parameters we need to specify, which, which is like APP, which means the location of your APK file, the application file, and then of course platform name, Android right here, and then the name of the emulator. So we have application, we have the Appium server uh, running and we have the Appium inspector to inspect our elements. Let's actually go ahead and start the session. Also guys, it's possible to debug stuff on the cloud provider. For example, if you have something in the cloud, you can connect to cloud and debug it right there. So you don't need to debug it all locally, but I feel like this is the best way just to start locally. And then if you need, you can just move to cloud provider and all that. There's also desired capability information. So if you have some specific needs for your project, for example, specific specific platform name, I don't know, <laughs> but in this case, typically Android or iOS, or specific parameters, how to connect to server, you can just basically go ahead and read this documentation right here. So let's actually click here to start the session. What it should do, it should basically run your My Expenses app. So it's gonna install it right here, and I have it on my desktop. So My Expenses adapts to your preference. Cool. Let's see, is it ready? Uh, let's actually go ahead and, and just click here, get started. All right, it should actually display the elements right here now. I don't know guys, it just crashed. <laughs> wow, it takes a while and it's probably gonna crash again. Yeah, it's crashed again. All right guys, so there was some problem with this specific APK. I don't know why, it didn't really work for automation purposes. Let's try something different. Let's try this app, which is called My Notes. And I already specified this path in the Appium Inspector right here. So let's actually go ahead and check that we have server running. Let's try again with this APK. I hope it should be better. Cool, so it's already installed stuff in this emulator. So here it is. So basically we can debug the app. Typically it takes a screenshot of the screen 
of the application running right now. But if you in doubt, if it shows the incorrect screen, just press it right here. Just press refresh source in the screenshot and it's going to show you the actual screenshot right now. So we have it right here. We can select element that we want to inspect. In this case, this element is, is this plus button. So what it says right here, it says element ID. Well, not the best element ID, guys. What we're interested in here, guys, is this one, is the resource ID. If you have it listed right here, which means it's good, your developers have provided the unique ID for this specific element and you can use it in your automation purposes. If your developers have not specified that, you can use this XPath right here. Yeah, it's not the best way because if there's just like slight changes to the uh, hierarchy of the application, for example, there's like one button moved up and the other button is moved down, let's say, in this case, something gonna break and this not gonna work anymore, which is not that great. Typically, guys, if you have resource ID, this is what we should use. And some other stuff about this specific element, but we don't need it. Let's inspect some other elements, guys. For example, the more button. Here it says XPath and it shows the content description, guys, which is cool. It's much less fragile than in this element because take a look here. It says hierarchy, Android widget frame layout, blah, blah, blah. So basically, even, even if one of those elements is changing, the whole thing is not going to work. So we are interested in this one. Here it is. Content description here is much more accurate. It just shows the exact ID of this button, which is better. It doesn't have resource ID here, but we can use the XPath in this case. So you just need to basically adjust which method you want to use for your needs. Let's actually see how it works in action, because we want to use all this stuff in the code, right? And here is a very interesting feature available in AppM Inspector. This feature is called Recorder. So you can record your actions and then this way you can basically know exactly the code basically you can just like paste chunks of this code and your application is gonna work well you need to of course adjust it uh, accordingly but in many cases this is what you're interested in just press start recording here then perform actions for example click the button and we're gonna just press tap here and it says find element by accessibility id more options which is fine then we can click other buttons for example about we can click it right here you can click tap and it's performing the action you see guys, it shows about my notes. Then of course we can go press this button, we can go back and we can of course press the plus button right here. Let's click it and is it clickable? or not. No, it's not clickable. Why? In some cases, guys, the element is hidden by some other element. So in this case, there's this view probably overlapping it and we cannot access it directly. This is bad. We need to ask developers to change some layout stuff here so we can access the element here. But maybe there's some other way. Maybe if we click this button, is there a capability of adding stuff? No, guys, there's only a capability of deleting the notes and we cannot do that. So this application again, guys, is probably not the best one because it was never designed for test automation looks like. All right, guys, so basically this shows what kind of problems test engineers are running into when automating applications. So in this case, it's like, as you can see, some buttons are not really accessible and this is like the main button of the application. Well, you can start automating and then you can see the problems and then you can ask developer to improve the app and add accessibility labels and IDs to your app and see how it works. So guys, we're gonna inspect some other elements, for example, delete all nodes and as you can see expat locators is not recommended it says right here but there's a resource id available so we can technically see uh, what kind of method it's using when we type it here and it should use this uh, it should use id method so you can see guys that actually in this case after i press the button it actually recorded expat which is not good it should have recorded the resource id so this is how it's working this is like the tool that helps you but you need to modify it for your own needs. So not great, but here's what we have. And of course you can do some other actions. For example, the main one is send keys. For example, you can tap on the field and send specific characters there. So just see how it works. Well guys, test automation using AppM is not ideal because we are dealing with the application that we probably don't have access to the source code, but at least we can explore it. We can try to find a way to automate it. Most likely you're gonna ask your developer to improve it or you might need to modify it yourself. Just go to the code and add stuff there. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe there will be more videos about this automation see you soon bye guys